So, I've already beat Pokemon without ever taking any damage. It took me 138 hours. But what if I did the inverse, where I'm not allowed to deal any damage? Is that even possible? Well, yeah, my friend already did it. It took him over 31 hours. And, you know, I was willing to let him have this small success until he insulted my beautiful son, Wooper. I gave him one chance to stop the sass. I said if he wronged me one more time, I'd be forced to retaliate. I'd do the same challenge, but better. His response? So I did, in six hours. I was streaming Super Mario Odyssey when this occurred. I dropped everything and booted up a new game of Fire Red. Named myself Ant and the rival was Crow. I grabbed a Bulbasaur as quickly as possible and went on my way. Crow, the friend now turned rival, realized what was happening, panicked, and started editing his already completed challenge into a video. The race was on. Of course, since I'm not allowed to deal damage, the first rival fight was pretty simple. Bulbasaur has growl and tackle, so I just growled until I lost, and it let me progress. Now, you're probably thinking, how the heck do you defeat Pokemon without damaging them? Well, it's a bit of a struggle, but there is a way. I caught a second Pokemon, Caterpie, and started running back and forth in Viridian Forest, until I found a Kakuna. By switching out between my two Pokemon, I could let Kakuna harden without dealing any damage to it. I did this for 30 turns, until Harden was at a PP. The Kakuna began to struggle, dealing damage to my Bulbasaur, but also hurting itself in the process. By repeatedly letting Bulbasaur get hit by struggle, Kakuna took itself out, getting Bulbasaur some much needed EXP. I did this for only three battles actually, until Bulbasaur reached level 7, where it learned Leech Seed. I haven't really explained the full rules of this challenge yet, uh, I just followed the rules that my rival had set. He said, no dealing any direct damage, so moves like Tackle and Flamethrower weren't allowed. But Crow said that indirect damage sources were fine, so things like Leech Seed and other status conditions such as Poisons or Burns were on the table. I was able to mow through the bug catchers in the forest and easily crush Brock with a Leech Seed Growl combo. First gym done. Dude, there's no shot. Uh, growl a few times. Should be easy. No, I'm not. I'm not worried at all. I'm not worried at all. Yeah, it's gonna take him. Uh, it's gonna take him a while. Oh yeah, since this was kind of a race, I did speed up the game, but Crow did the same on his run, so it was fair game. On the way to Cerulean, I caught two Nidoran and a Zubat to use later on. The rivalry match was a cakewalk, and Misty was no match for my now Ivysaur. Nugget Bridge was another story. Ivysaur had learned Poison Powder along the way, and the combination of Poison and Leech Seed handled nearly every Pokemon I came up against, until I encountered an Oddish. I realized that Oddish, being Grass Poison types, were completely immune to both of these effects. I had to employ a new strategy for these ones. This was where the Nidoran and Zubat came into play. By leering with Nidoran and switching to Zubat, I could supersonic and, with a bit of luck, the weakened Oddish would smack itself to death, which it did after a few attempts. With this temporary solution, I cleared out Nugget Bridge, caught an Oddish and saved Bill. With it kind of being a race and all, I was rushing through the game and my Pokemon were starting to get a little underleveled. Fortunately though, I had an easy solution to fix that, the daycare. By dropping a Pokemon in the daycare below Cerulean City, Every step I took was now one EXP for my Pokemon, so it was a simple matter of biking up and down until my Pokemon were strong enough to proceed. Like I said though, it was a race, and by biking up and down, I wasn't making any progress through the game. I had to carefully balance grinding and progress. I leveled up my Oddish and Zubat to around level 30 to get stronger and learn some useful moves. Uh, with my upgraded team, I cruised through the SSN, got cut, did the trash puzzle, ugh, and beat Surge with ease. From here, I made a beeline to Rock Tunnel. I couldn't really see where I was going, and my god, there were a lot of Bellsprouts and Oddish. Uh, despite having level 30s, these grass poison types were still a huge problem, because just spamming Confuse Raid wasn't really a consistent strategy. I struggled a bit having a few whiteouts along the way, but made it through eventually, only to remember that the next gym was Erica, Just more grass poison types. After thinking for a few moments, I thought of a solution and hightailed it to the Celadon game corner. Against all the rocket poison types, my leech seed and growl strategy was still hard carrying the run. It was smooth sailing securing the self-scope by seeding Giovanni, 
which I took straight to the Pokemon Tower. I could now see the ghost Pokemon, my salvation. I caught three Ghastly, cleared out the tower, and got the Poke Flute, which, uh, by the way, was the most helpful item in this entire challenge. I, I just didn't realize it yet. And returned to the daycare once more. I plopped those bad boys in there at a level 33, so their movesets consisted of Hypnosis, Confuse Ray, Curse, and Destiny Bond. All moves that didn't deal any direct damage. With these sacrificial ghastly at my disposal, I cursed through Erica, leaving me with my fourth badge. Yeah, I beat Gym 4. It's okay. We just beat Gym 3. <laughs> I knew the fastest route through Silphco, so I breezed through that, only to be stopped in my tracks by the rival fight. Crow's Charizard was level 40, and with its flamethrower, was able to outspeed and one-hit KO my entire team. I had to spend some precious time and money to buy Carbos from Celadon to increase the speed stat of my Haunter. Fortunately, it was just enough speed to work, and after a few more attempts, the rival fight was won. Giovanni was a pushover. Looking at my team at this point, I saw a fatal flaw. Every Pokemon was poison type. And the next gym? Sabrina, with her psychic types. She was seemingly another roadblock. Any of her psychic Pokemon could one-hit KO my entire team. <laughs> Lucky for me though, it didn't really matter. With my three ghosts, I just used Destiny Bond three times, and the psychic Pokemon took themselves out for a surprisingly easy fifth badge. With probably the hardest gym badge under my belt, I headed south to Fuchsia. While there, I grabbed Surf and Strength from the Safari Zone, obliterated Koga, and continued to Cinnabar using the Gift Lapras I picked up in Silphco. Because I'm a Pokemon genius, those simple gym quizzes were no match for my intellectual prowess. Unfortunately, Blaine's brute force overwhelmed my big brain. Blaine had four Pokemon. I could outspeed and Destiny Bond three of them, but that left Rapidash, who simply used Fire Blast and melted my remaining three Pokemon. It would take too long to go and train up another Ghastly, so I had to figure out another solution. As fate would have it, the solution was already in my party. Lapras was able to take a Fire Blast, and it happened to no Parish Song, which makes all Pokemon on the field faint in three turns. All that needed to happen was Rapidash missing one of three Fire Blasts, which it did on the third attempt. Uh, if you're familiar with these games, you'll know that there's a long Sevi Island section where Bill goes and makes you save some people or whatever, but you can just say no to that. So I ignored him, flew to Viridian for the final gym, and as with all the other Giovanni encounters, he kinda sucked. That was the eighth badge. Only the Indigo Plateau remained. I was severely underleveled as usual, so I did a final bout of daycare grinding and distracted Crow in the process. How's it going? How's your, uh, are you regretting that tweet yet? I or... am I am not regretting the tweet because I'm still very much ahead of you right now. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I totally am. You're struggling behind. I mean, I have all of my footage, right? So that's my little yeah, me my too. Little handicap. I'm yeah, I, I almost have all my footage as well. I've been, you know, for four <laughs> over four hours. Yeah, I'm four hours. I have eight, eight badges. Eight. Wait, you don't tell me you beat Giovanni already. Yeah, first try actually. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> my god. Okay, I have all of the footage at least, and I'm about halfway through with writing the script for my post commentary. You're saying you have about three hours left on the script then, and then it needs to be edited. Well, technically, uh, I'm like sharing the work. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't edit uh, my own videos. I have mm -hmm. editors. Yeah, you're not able to. Oh. I, I got you. Hey, you're distracting me. <laughs> Am I, no, I'll be honest. Are you sh really? I've written three words since you called. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. That was the whole ah, point of this call. come on. I want to ask. Yes? Are you staying up streaming? Yeah. Uh, and going to edit and write a script tonight? The stream isn't stopping to the video, though. Okay, you're distra okay, you're distracting me. You're distract yeah, it's distract I need to okay. I need to do this. Okay, yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> have a, have a good one. That was productive. I stalled him for a few minutes. Hopefully those few minutes mattered. I trained up Venusaur to level 53, Lapras to 48, and a Haunter to 50. Still a little weak, but I figured I could make it work. I plowed through the final rival fight before Victory Road, quickly solved the puzzles to enter Indigo Plateau. I attempted the Elite Four, only to get swiftly beaten down by Agatha. I, I had no chance. There was no way I'd be able to beat the Elite Four with my current team being so weak. Lapras was basically useless, as trainers would just swap out their Pokemon after Parasong was used. 
After deliberating for a bit, I came up with a revamped Lapras set. I taught it Toxic, Protect, and Double Team, TMs that I picked up throughout the run. I also bought a few X Defends and Revives, and to round out Lapras's bag of tricks, I gave it a Leftovers for some passive healing during the upcoming battles. I wasn't sure if this strategy would work, so I went to the Elite Four for a test run, only to realize the true power of what I had created. Lorelei opened with Dugong, which I cursed with a Haunter, then switched to Lapras. After a few turns, it was taken out. Then, the fun began, as I gave Lorelei the most frustrating battle of her entire life. While Dugong was busy dying, Lapras had set up six double teams, which meant that Lorelei's Pokémon were only gonna land moves a third of the time. By using Toxic, then Confuse Ray, it was just a waiting game until her whole team gradually perished. There was one problem though. All of Lapras's moves had very limited PP, so I couldn't just waste turns by using random moves. I had to stall some other way. This was where I discovered the power of the Pokéflute. Being a key item, it's infinitely reusable, and when in battle, it wakes up all the Pokémon, but more importantly, wastes a turn. So while Lorelei's team was withering away, I forced her to listen to the constant droning of a 10-year-old trying to play a flute. <laughs> As if this battle wasn't toxic enough already. Anytime her Pokemon managed to hit Lapras, the leftovers would just recover the HP before they could land another hit. Before I knew it, Lorelei had been defeated. Next was Bruno, who, let's be honest here, has always been the weakest link. It was a pretty simple case of Leech Seed and wait, as the Pokemon flailed around helplessly. Uh, Agatha was a lot more of the same. Just Leech Seed and wait, with some additional Poke Fluting whenever they tried to put Venusaur to sleep. This was going shockingly well, considering I was only trying to test out the new strats. There were only two battles left, and I started to believe this attempt could actually be the one. I healed up my team a bit, and gave Lance a try. The Toxic strategy worked for Gyarados and Aerodactyl, but hit a snag once I reached the Dragonairs. I completely forgot to consider their ability, Shed Skin, which made Toxic useless. I had to be very careful here. One wrong move, and these Dragonairs would be my demise. They outsped almost every member of my team, and Outrage packed a punch. I was forced to switch in a weak Haunter, who was defeated in a single blow, in order to safely send in the strong Haunter, Tail, who just barely outsped and could Destiny Bond. I was able to revive Tail and Destiny Bond once again to defeat the second Dragonair, but that just led into another problem. Destiny Bond had run out of uses, and Dragonite was still there. I had only two Pokemon remaining on my team, Lapras and Venusaur. So I sent out Lapras in the hopes that the toxic strategy would prevail once again. This wishful thinking was immediately thwarted by Dragonite using Safeguard. All of Lapras and Venusaur's movesets were instantly rendered useless. I had to find a backup, and fast. I revived Tail in a last-ditch effort and sacrificed Venusaur to bring him in safely. I was out of Destiny Bond, so Curse was my only hope. By some miracle, Tail outsped the Dragonite and fired off one last curse as Outrage finished him off. It was up to Lapras to survive long enough for the curse to run its course. I hadn't prepared for a serious Elite Four attempt, so I never purchased any healing items. There were only a handful of them I picked up throughout the run, but Lapras managed to hold out and survive just long enough for the Dragonite to be defeated, and there was one battle left. The champion, Crow. He had defeated the Elite Four before me, but just like in real life, he had no chance of beating me. After healing up my team with what little I had left, I entered the final fight. And the toxic strats began. Pidgeot perished. Rhydon ravaged. Executor executed. Alakazam annihilated. Gyarados gone. And Charizard crushed. Six hours. Pokemon without dealing damage. A challenge which took my rival 31 hours, I started, finished, and edited in a single stream. The moral of the story, don't disrespect Wooper, or you will get whooped yourself. Thanks for watching, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.